Good morning. Good morning. If you would, if you have your Bibles, uh, you can turn with me to Numbers chapter 33. Numbers 33, near the beginning, if you're looking for it. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. Numbers. I decided I'd preach from a couple books that we just like to skip. You know what I mean? We just straight skip it when we're reading. So I'm going to hit a few of these things. Numbers 33. If you're ready, say amen. Let's jump right into it. These are the stages of the people of Israel when they went out of the land of Egypt by their companies under the leadership of Moses and Aaron. Moses wrote down their starting places stage by stage by command of the Lord. And these are their stages according to their starting places places. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word, and I pray today that it would speak to us. I pray today that our hearts, our minds would be open to receive all that you want to speak today. Uh, we know that one word from you, God, can change everything. And so we pray today, God, we'd receive all that you have for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, I don't know if any of you are like this, but I don't mind driving. Anybody kind of like to drive sometimes? You like to just take a drive? I loved when it, when it snowed recently, and I just get in my Jeep and just drive around a little bit. It's, uh, it's fun for me to do. Um, but I like driving specifically when I know there's a destination. I know where I'm, I'm kind of going to a certain place. And, and sometimes if you drive certain roads for so long, you start to know that road really well, right? Like there's, there's these markers that you have in your mind, like, hey, this is going to be a place, this is going to be a place. And the drive is kind of, you know, it's kind of broke up. And over the years, I've driven a lot uh, to the mountains. My wife's family has a cabin there, had family land there uh, growing up, and so that's where we spend a lot of our time. Uh, in the summertime throughout the year, we take the occasional trip up, maybe sometimes just honestly for 24 hours, we'll go stay the night there. But that drive, um, it's a lot shorter when you know like there's, there's breaks in the road, right? There's markers in the road. And for me, when I'm driving that road, I know all the towns I'm looking for. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Like, I know all the towns I'm looking for. I'm, I know that first I'm going to hit Ripley, and I'm probably going to hit anywhere other than Burger King because my wife doesn't like Burger King, right? So, like, we'll, we'll, we'll hit something there in Ripley. Uh, then we'll go up the road. We'll hit Charleston. You know, that's the next big, big place you get to. And, and for whatever reason, Montgomery, I like going through Montgomery. We'll drive through there. Then we'll get to Golly Bridge with a really cool waterfall, right? Anybody seen Golly Bridge, the waterfall? If you haven't, worth the drive. You should just go there and check it out. But we get to Golly Bridge, and we'll go up through Hawk's Nest, Anstead. And then once we get to Anstead, I'm like, okay, we're almost there. And then finally, we get to Mount Nebo. And now that is kind of the drive for me. I realize that there are those markers created in my mind. When I get to those places, if someone gives me a call and they're like, hey, how far is it going to be? You know, how, how long are you going to be till you get here? I know it's going to be about an hour and 15. I know it's going to be about an hour and a half or two hours based upon those markers. I know there's a start, and I know there's an end. There, there is a destination, but the interesting thing is the drive was still broke up in stages. In Numbers 33, that is a term that they use um, to describe the children of Israel walking through the wilderness. They knew they were going to the promised land. They knew that God had said, hey, this is where you're going. You're going to set out to a land that I promised for you. But in Numbers 33, they haven't made it there yet. And when I look at the wilderness experience, I believe that it is one of triumph and it is one of hardship or vice versa, right? Hardship or triumph, triumph or hardship. And when I speak of the wilderness experience, this is the time in Israel's history where uh, they came out of Egypt uh, they were set free from bondage. They were under slavery, and they spent 40 years in the wilderness. Um, some would say roaming around aimlessly, um, but there was certainly a destination. Even though they, they wandered through the wilderness for 40 years, there was still a destination. And we must understand this, that Numbers 33 was of great importance to Israel. It was, it was of great importance. It was, it was telling them of... Uh, their history, of what it was, of what it is, okay? So this is a chapter for us in the Bible. When we get to, we may just like burn right through this, right? Like just, just real quick, 
we, we pass by, and we don't realize that this chapter is actually of great importance to somebody. Have you ever thought about that? Like sometimes you read something in the Bible, it's not a big deal for you, but for them, when they read this, the children of Israel, when they read this, they were like, oh man, this is a big deal. Why? Because this is telling us of our history. And we must understand that it's also telling us of our history of faith. Tracking back for us the story of faith. You know, there are markers for us in our life, I believe, in, in different stages and different moments that will remind us of what God has done. Amen? There are, there are places in our life where we've been, we're like, okay, that, that's something I can remember. That's something that I, that I think about. There are these things that, that happen, that take place. That it, it is certainly something that you could even say would mark your life. And it's important to know that, that Moses... In this, in this chapter, he, he commands, or God commands Moses to write this down. That's what the word tells us, that Moses was commanded by God, hey, write down what I'm telling you to write down. And, and this is a section in the Bible when we see it, we're like, oh, you know, okay, I, I, I get it, they're moving through. It just seems like a lot of names, right, a lot of places. Let's just be really honest. When we start seeing all the names and the places, how many just kind of want to be like, power read, Right, power skim. Right? But as we read the Old Testament, we have to keep this in mind that it is a shadow for us to look back upon. It's, it's a shadow for us to look back upon to see who God is and also to see how he leads a people. Who God is and how he leads people. A people. Numbers 33 is not only history, it is a help for us on our journey of faith. Every word in the Bible is, is not there uh, by any accident at all. It is there by design. It is inspired. It is the inspired word of God. So that means that every word that we read in God's word, it has importance. Amen? And I, I've said this uh, often, I feel like, in the past year or so that God's word is a complete story to build our faith. Like God's word from Genesis to Revelation, it is a complete work. It is a story that we can look to to see how we live our life, to see who God is, to see what he wants for our life as well. Faith is not a singular moment, but a series of moments. Faith is not a singular moment, moment. Faith is a series of moments. And you can see this in God's word. It is a story of faith, but it's not just one faith moment. It is a series of moments that help us on our journey. I believe that God speaks through repetition. I really do. Probably because we can be so dumb sometimes. Let's just be honest. We, don't, we just need to know over and over and over again, right? There's repetition. And there's repetition in God's word. It's clear he says things over and over and over and over again. God speaks through markers. God speaks at and in stages of our life. I think that we could all agree with this statement that our life is broke up in stages. Our life is broke up in stages. Some of you do not see God now the way you did 10 years ago. Amen? Some of you have experienced different things now in your life, at different stages in your life now than when you did 20 years ago. Because that's what life is about. Life is about stages. I want to go to Numbers 33 again just to kind of highlight something here because I want to, I want to change gears and talk about this for a moment. Numbers 33, one said that when they went out of the land of Egypt. It's very important, when they went out of the land of Egypt. Again, this is, uh, this is being recorded for them so that they know, hey, this is our history. Remember when we went out of the land of Egypt? Remember when we were delivered from bondage? Remember when we were set free? And I wanna say something about that because I, I feel like so often, and I'm saying something again that I've said often in the past few weeks, repetition, right? We learned through repetition. We make this statement and this idea our end when this statement should be our beginning. 
Let me say this first. There is a direct correlation between Israel being delivered from Egypt and us being delivered from sin. Remember, the the word of God is a shadow. We look back to it and we see this. The story of Egypt is also a direct correlation to us being delivered from what? Bondage, being delivered from sin. We were once lost. We were now found. We were once held in bondage of sin, but now we are set free. When you see this story of the children of Israel being delivered, this is a direct correlation. And notice this, they did not leave Egypt and say, okay, we're good. This is it. This is the final resting place. But there are times when I feel like when people are born again, when they're delivered from sin, when they come out of that, all of a sudden it's like, okay, this is good. This is the pinnacle. This is the highlight of my life. And I would propose today that that is the start of our life. And I totally understand and will continue to strive to lead people to that start. And may I just say again that it is a start, but it is not an end. But sometimes we do what we end our services that way, but we end our services that way to offer somebody a new start. So it's not saying, hey, get saved and that's the end. What we're saying is get saved and that's the start. Allow God to deliver you, and that is now the start of your new life. The Bible calls it in the New Testament, we are a new creation in Christ Jesus. And if we're a new creation, what happens? If we're a new creation, we learn new things, we, we learn new ways. We learn now how to talk, we learn now how to walk. And here's how we treat salvation often. It's like, oh, oh you're saved now, you got it now. Actually, when you're saved, it's like, I don't, I don't really know what all to do. But I know now that I'm new. I know now that I've been set free, that I've set out, and guess what? I don't want to stay here. They they did not leave Egypt and say they're good. Being delivered from bondage is the beginning of our journey. And when we look at faith, and I I think even when we read the Bible, we tend to see these these certain things. We tend to see like like mountaintop experiences. We, We tend to see miracles, right? These, these, these miracle moments, these mountain moments that do what? Create these, like, these monuments in our life. Yeah, I just did the preacher thing, three M's. It's just more powerful that way. When we read the New Testament specifically, when we see Jesus, oftentimes we'll probably see those, those, those really amazing moments that he creates and all the amazing things that happens around him. But if not careful, we will miss the fact that God speaks at different stages of our life and how that will create different mental markers for us of who he is. And that life is not always about the miracles and life is not always about the mountaintop experiences. It's about the in-between, isn't it? And, And when we think of faith, we want the big stuff. And please, before I go any further, I want you to know something, that I still believe God is a God of miracles. <laughs> so I, I want to go ahead and just set the record straight in case you get the wrong idea from my tone this morning. God can still move mountains. God can still do all the things that God has always done. Why? Because God is God. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has no less power today than he did yesterday. But if we are not careful, we will make our life of faith or we, were, we will desire it to be just about the miracles and just about the mountains. But we must understand this. There are stages in faith. There are stages in faith. We move from one to the next. Anybody experience some stages in your faith? Some challenges, some difficulties, some things that didn't make sense, maybe some things that were so very incredible and amazing and they've become markers for you in your life. Numbers 33, 2, Moses wrote down their starting places, the Bible says, stage by stage. Moses wrote down their starting places stage by stage. It was a reminder of where they came from and it was also an encouragement for where they were going. 
This was something, this was a, a, a record, a document they could look back upon, as it is a document for us to look back upon, to say, look who God is and look what God has done. Look at the faithfulness of God. Moses recorded it stage by stage. Why, why did he not just write down the big moment? Why did he not just write down the, 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 the ama seemingly amazing things that were taking place? Because there's something in Numbers 33 for all of us, I believe, today. The start was not meant to be the place where they stayed. And I want to encourage someone today that where you started is not meant to be the place that you're, you're to stay. Sometimes people become born again and they say, now what? And I want to encourage you to, to let that now what to lead you further and closer into God. Because God does have a now what for us. But sometimes that now what doesn't always happen instantaneously. Am I right? Faith is not always about mountains. It's not always about miracles. It's also about the movement that happens in between those things. As I look back on my life, and I'm sure as you look back on your life as well, there are these things that I can remember, these things that I can recall. There are these, um, there are these moments that they're, they're etched in my mind. Are you with me? How many have those memories in your mind? Like, man, that, that's something I can remember. That's something that was, was of significance in my life. And, and I'm just going to tell you, I'm going to make up this number right here. Preachers do this sometimes. We make up statistics on the spot, and I'm doing that currently right now. I'm guessing. There are maybe seven to ten, eight to ten, I don't know, something like that, moments in my life that are very impactful to me, that have, have molded me, have shaped me, have made me into who I am. I'm, I'm talking spiritual this morning. There are obviously a lot of memories that I have, but I'm talking in my, in my spiritual life, in my walk of faith, there are just the, that many times probably where I, I say, man, I can absolutely tell you that this was something in my life that was of great importance. And we need to remember that from one miracle to the next, one mountain to the next, there's what in between? There is movement in between. And sometimes there's a sense of frustration that is created in faith. And I think we just need to, to, to say that more often and to think about that more often, that sometimes faith can be frustrating. Faith is, is not always something that we understand. Faith is not always something that we can see. And here's what creates frustration for us in, in these different stages is that we might have a lack of change. Lack of change can cause frustration for people sometimes. And we're all wired a little different. I like change. I like when things are moving. I like when it seems like God's doing something new and different. And, and for years, for years, pastoring this church and starting this church, you know, it was like this, this airplane takeoff, right, where everything seems to be going well. Everything seems to be going right, and it's like, man, this is amazing. God's doing great stuff. And then when you get up to cruising altitude, sometimes you're, you're frustrated because why? You were continually feeling changes. You were continually feeling this, this gradual climb, and now all of a sudden when you're at cruising altitude, there's frustration that kicks in. Do you know what I'm saying? Maybe you start a new job, maybe, maybe it's a new stage of life, and you feel that, man, it's exciting, it's new. Then, then lack of change happens, and now you're all of a sudden frustrated. You start saying, was well, God not moving anymore? Maybe, maybe you know, there, there's a string of like five services where you feel the presence of God. You know what I'm talking about, like, man, it was, it was electric. Like, maybe you come to North Bend Nights, and you're like, oh, my gosh, this is crazy, right? And then you come to another service, you're like, I just don't feel it, right? And you, and you think all of a sudden that there's something there's something wrong now because you're starting to feel that frustration of faith. Maybe you stay too long at a stage and you're starting to feel that frustration. Here, here's the deal. I can't tell you what's going on in your life, but I can give you some, some things that I believe we can see in all humanity that tells us that sometimes there's frustration when we stay too long. Even Israel, when you look at Israel, you look back at their story. There was frustration when they came out of Egypt. I mean, I can't imagine the excitement. I can't imagine the sea parting, right? It's like, oh my gosh, the sea split. We're walking through on dry land. Then all of a sudden, we go a few days without water, and we're like, we want to go back to Egypt. 
God, what do you, have, you, have you brought us out here to die? That's what, that's what Israel said to Moses. And we say things like, well, if God would just show me something, if God just showed you something, guess what? Next week, he'd have to show you something again just to appease you. You've heard people say that, right? Well, if God would just show up and I just see God do that. You're wrong. You know how I know you're wrong? Because all throughout the Bible, God just showed up and then people, guess what? Forgot next week. On to the next thing. We're the same with everything, right? Big, big news story comes out. Oh, this news story is crazy. Next week, something else. We forgot about it. We are a forgetful people. They were frustrated. They were irritated. They wanted to go back to Egypt. Sometimes in your life, maybe you felt like that. But Numbers 33, 5, it, I'm going to skip a few verses ahead, and I want to read this verse. It, it says that the people of Israel set out for Ramses and camped at Sakoth. They set out, and they camped. They set out, and they camped. I want you to think about that idea. Because this is not just one verse, just so you know, and you can kind of look ahead here if you'd like. This goes on for 45 more verses. That statement that I just read to you, it goes on for 45 more verses. I'm not saying the exact same statement, but like they set out, they camped. They set out, they camped. They set out, they camped. And essentially, that goes on for 40 years. Some of y'all like camping trips. You probably wouldn't like it for 40 years. You say, well, that's adventure. Yeah, well, I would imagine that sometimes it gets a bit redundant, right? And this is the stuff I think that we, we skim over in the Old Testament, but it is saying something to us to strengthen our faith. In the life of faith, think about this, what happens? We set out, we camp. We set out, we camp. I love to set out. I'm an adventurous person. I love to go on adventures. I love to go on kayak trips. I love to be by the river. I love to be in the mountains. I love to set out. I love to camp, but I also love to go home. Right? Usually when the steak runs out. <laughs> it's time to go. But I see this pattern in the story here where they set out, they camp, they set out, they camp, they set out, they camp. And, and you have this idea of like, what is God doing and I want to tell you today that God is doing something in the midst of these monotonous things in our life, in the midst of setting out, in the midst of camping. And that wasn't a, a real quick moment sometimes. Sometimes they stayed places a lot longer than a few days. It wasn't just a little nice, a nice little camping trip. Like they set up shop, they tore it down, they set out. They set up shop, they tore it down. Are you with me? Faith is not always mountains. And if you think in your mind it is, you will grow very weary very quickly. And you will get very frustrated very quickly. When people set out to climb mountains, they don't just close their eyes and appear on top. There's a lot of preparation that goes into that. There's a lot of a thought that goes into that. And guess what? There's a lot of movement that goes into that. Faith is not always miracles. I love miracles. I love when God does something so amazing, something so miraculous, something that is so evident. But that's not always what faith is. The movement in between is where faith is strengthened. If you see a person with strong faith, I promise you, I promise you right now, they do not live on the mountain. If you see a person that you look to and you say, man, that person, right? Man, they trust God. They believe in God. God just does so many great things in their life. I promise you right now, they have walked through many a great valley. They have settled in the plains. They have walked long and hard on the plateaus of life. And they have also seen mountains. And I'm, I'm telling you this today, and I want to talk about this today because I don't want to give people the idea that when you set out on this journey of faith, it is a continual mountain. There are mountains. There are miracles, yes. And there are moments in your life that will mark you forever. But can I tell you what gets you from one place to the other is the movement in between. 
And we cannot base our faith on one story in the Bible. That is why it is a complete work. And that is why we need the fullness of Scripture to show us how God moves in every stage, in every season of life. If you read one story in the Bible and you say, man, I really like that story and I'm going to base my life upon that story, I'm going to tell you right now, this is going to create some frustration for you in your life because we think it's always got to be that way. I, I've, I've preached Jesus walking on water. I've heard it preached. And guess what? I'll probably preach it again because it's a great story and you can preach it over and over again. But if, that's, if that is what you base your whole entire faith existence on, you'll think your whole life you just got to be out there walking on water. First of all, let me just clarify, Jesus walked on water. You didn't, and he did it once, as it's recorded. Or, do you understand what I'm saying? I'm not downplaying that, but here's what we do. We take that story like, I'm, I'm, that's faith, just walking on water. That's not always faith. Did Jesus always walk on water? Why do we not use the scripture for faith that Jesus sweat great drops of blood from his agony and turmoil because he was gonna go to the cross in the garden? Is that not faith? But what we do as humanity is we make these moments, this is the thing, this is the moment, this is how God wants to move. And can I just tell you that faith, faith is not just based upon one thing. The life of faith is not always about a big moment. The life of faith is about the movement in between the movement in between sometimes we need to know that the road is long sometimes we need to know that the road is tough sometimes we need to know that the road is quiet my, my wife and I can ride in a car we cannot speak for like eight hours anybody like that you got a good relationship or it's really bad one of the two but, but we can go for a long time and we can be in the car and just be quiet. Now, you might have some relationships with people where you feel like there's always gotta be noise and always talking. But I, t I actually told her this this week. I was like, you know, I really like being around them because like we can just be quiet and it's okay. You don't, you don't have to say anything. And that, that, I think that shows kind of a different level of relationship sometimes when there can be some silence. And I want to assure you this, that when you, when you walk with God long enough and you're, you, you have a relationship with God long enough, there will be some silence. And that does not mean that God doesn't want to be around you. And that does not mean that he doesn't want to speak to you. And that doesn't mean that he doesn't want to show you something. But I think there are times that silence shows the depth of a relationship. I've walked long roads without hearing God speak. When I say that, I mean, we can obviously look to the, God's word and we can see what he speaks to us, but you know what I'm talking about, right? Like you just, you sense, feel the presence of God, what he's leading you, a direction in which he's leading you to go. Been long journeys where I felt like, man, I just, I just, I need something fresh. You ever just felt like that? And there's nothing wrong with that. That is, that is humanity within us saying, God, we just need, God, we need something just to kind of, pull us through this moment and I'll say that time and time again right when it seems like we're beyond that point God can show up and do something so new in our life but it is the movement in between that gets us from one place to the other as we go through stages there are these markers created there are these markers created just like my drive to the mountains I know I know there's a destination I know I'm headed to a certain place, but I drive by these certain places that, I, that I've marked in my mind. Are you with me? You, 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 walk by, you, you walk by these places in your walk of faith and you start marking things. I know God's done this. I know God's done that. I know God's kept me through this. I know God's kept me through that. And these markers not only remind you of who God is, but they also remind you that there is a destination ahead. The more I'm on this road of faith, the more I go through different stages and the more markers I have to see where I've come from and where I'm going. People that walk with the Lord for a long time, there's a lot of markers. And they can look back and they can see, I've been on this road long enough that this is how I've marked what God has done in my life. 
Markers are made to show the faithfulness of God and to build the measure of our faith. I want you to think about that. Markers are, are made to show the faithfulness of God and build the measure of our faith. When you're on this road of faith long enough, you begin to see the faithfulness of God more and more and more. And guess what else happens? Your faith is also built more as well. Sometimes people walk for a long period of time and they just feel like, I, I, I need God to speak. I need God to, 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 to just give me that nudge. And I'm, I'm just gonna go out on a limb here and say this, that maybe this is that moment for you. Maybe someone came in like, man, I really need... I really need God to speak something fresh and new. And maybe he's just encouraging someone today to say, look, you need to keep moving in the same direction that I called you toward. Maybe, maybe you just need to keep putting one foot in front of the other. Maybe you just need to keep worshiping him. Maybe, maybe you just need to come in to his house and realize that you have something to bring and you have something to give other than just saying, God, God just do something. It's amazing when we begin to move toward God what he does in our life. The Bible says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. As we draw near to God, he draws near to us. Notice that the children of Israel, they never just stayed in one place and said, all right, that's it. There was always a moment where they packed up and they set out and then they camped again. They packed up, they set out and they camped again. This shows us that God is faithful at every season in our life. And it shows that in every season of life, if we will allow God, he will continue to build our faith in him. I've set out, I've camped. I've set out, I've camped. God spoke. I've set out, I've camped, and I've camped longer, and I've camped longer, and I've camped longer. Packed up, set out, God spoke. I don't, I don't get to decide when those markers happen, but when they happen, I have to decide to mark it down. I, I have to decide to remember that. And in times of discouragement, in times of I don't know where I'm going, genuinely, I think back about all that God's done in my life. I think back about how he saved me. I think back about how he set me free. I think back about this place and these people and what God has done on this journey. It shows the faithfulness of God. It doesn't show the faithfulness of myself. It shows the faithfulness of who he is, of what he's done, not of our capability, but of his capability. And what happens when a people surrender to God? I say, God, use us for your glory, for your honor. So I want to ask you this question as we close. Are you making markers are you making markers from stage to stage in your life? Are you marking down the faithfulness of God and are you seeing your faith built in your life? Don't be discouraged with the stages. Listen, be encouraged today. Don't be discouraged with where you are. Know that you might not be where you want to be, but where you are is so much better than where you've come from. Don't be discouraged. See the faithfulness of God. See the faith that is being built in your life. Let's stand to our feet this morning. If we could just for a moment, let's just, let's close our eyes for prayer. And no, you don't have to close your eyes to pray. It's not like God hears you more when your eyes close, but when you close your eyes, you can focus on him. Let's not think about where we're going today. Let's not think about what's going on. Let's think about right now, right here, in this moment. May we, just for a second, think back upon our life of faith. Let us just remember, maybe for some, you need to go back to that moment when you surrendered your life to Jesus. Maybe for others, you need to think about times when you know that God has come through for you. Maybe times when you knew you were so discouraged, but God, at just the right time, through a, through a person or situation or circumstance, God, God used that to speak to you. As we're thinking about that, I also want 
others in the room who maybe you say, yeah, I've, I don't have a walk of faith, but I, I long for what you're speaking of today. And can I tell you that today, today can be the day of salvation. Today can be the day that you put your faith and your trust, your belief in Jesus Christ. Jesus can save you. Jesus can make you new. So if that's you in this place, just know right now you can surrender your life to Jesus. The Bible says in Romans 10 that if we confess with our mouth, we believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord, we will be saved. And so right now, you can just surrender to him and say, Lord Jesus, I need you. If you would, church, would you help me pray this? And if you're here today, you don't, you don't know Christ as Lord and Savior, but you want to, we're just gonna lead you in a prayer today. There's no power in the prayer. What there's power is in your surrender. Power in Jesus Christ who has set you free and who can set you free. And so church, help me pray as I pray this and encourage those around you who possibly may not have entered into this walk of faith. Let's pray this. Lord Jesus, I know that I need you. I don't want to live this life without you. So I surrender to you today. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe in your life. I believe in your death. I believe in your resurrection. And I trust you to lead me. Guide me. Direct me. In Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you so much for this opportunity we have to pray. And we have the opportunity to to walk out this life of faith. And I pray today that the church be strengthened and encouraged. And maybe someone today that came in lost is found. Maybe someone today has been born again, set free. They've been set free from bondage. And we thank you for that right now. And we just pray, Lord God, you'd give them the strength to walk every step of the way. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for all that you've done. And it's in Jesus' name.